This episode of the Capital G Show has been brought to you by the Battletoads lore. It's just like the Mega Man X lore. It's about a one minute video that explains the history of the Battletoads. So if you're like me and this is one of those shows from your childhood, or if you just want to learn about them, check it out. It's in the description. Very good video. What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. DN Dual Commentary. My opponent's rating is 1695. I'm 1659. So actually, if you flip-flop the last two numbers in our ratings, we're basically the same. I decided to pick paper, which is a mistake. You always pick scissors no matter what. doesn't matter how many times you have to pick. Scissors always wins. All right, so my opponent activates Tenki, and I'm like, oh, geez, please don't be a mirror match. I've played a lot of those lately. Bujin Mirror Match is one of the most unpleasant things ever. He searches for bears, so at least I know I'm playing against Fire Fist. Um, I mean, usually if Fire if Bujin start, they just roll this match. Um, Fire Fist, you really just fight their back row. You don't really fight their monsters. The, your your hair and um and turtle take care of the monsters. He dualities for Gorilla, Effect Veiler, and Solemn Warning. He takes the Effect Veiler, I guess, because he doesn't know what he's playing against, and Mermail could probably get over Warning kind of easily, I guess. But um, uh, I probably would have still took the warning. Warning is just too powerful of a card. He summons Bear, and he's going to set one, two, and three. All right, so you guys may have noticed I'm playing warning in the deck. I basically trimmed my deck to where I've taken out one Kaiser Coliseum. I took out the Dark Hole, and I think I took out one Lance, and I added in, like, two Deep Presents and a warning. And it's just so that you can fight back, fight back Excuse me, when you don't happen to have Royal Decree. Like, Royal Decree is the be-all, end-all, but when you don't have it, you need some way of fighting back. So you see I hit a deep present. And just, again, having a few traps in your deck makes all the difference. I mean, if you have Royal Decree out, you're probably winning against most decks. And then if you happen to have those traps, then it just helps. So uh, unfortunately, he sees the deep present, which sucks because I know that, you know, had I uh, had the deep present and milled for warning, he would have just directly attacked into it. And I probably would have been able to make some type of... Um, some type of or mount some type of uh, field presence here. I don't want to put any monsters on board, even uh, not even Quaylen, because I don't want it going to the graveyard when I could potentially use it as a beat stick against this deck. Anyways, he summons warning. I'm, I mean, he's, he summons warning. He summons card card D. I immediately use solemn warning. Um, I use pot duality. Actually, that was a mistake. I should have left that duality set because now he knows where the D prison is. <laughs> so if he draws MST and I set my uh, set a card in hand, he knows where the damn D prison is. So you see, um, I duality for Book of Moon and two MSTs, I believe. Um, I can't take the Book of Moon because it's too back row. It could easily be like Mirror Force or some a random jank. So um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to set the duality. I'm going to set the MST and I'm just going to let those two ride out. Leave the monsters in my hand. I wish that he'd just attack into the deep prison and give up the fucking bear, but he's he wants to make shit difficult. So in the end phase, I blind MST him. I hit a Phoenix Chain, which is a card that I would have been content eating, but you know, whatever. I finally summon or I, I summon something that's actually big enough. I have no problem summoning into back row. I just want the end result to be good. Like I want to be able to get over that fucking bear, and I don't want it hitting my life point. So um, I've got Buja Incarnation, uh, let's see, Buja Incarnation, Yamato, and Deep Prison. Um, you know, you could, I took the Deep Prison, you could argue that two Deep Prison is overkill. I just did that in case he happened to draw, um, a random MST, or if he happened to draw, um, you know, Fire Fist, um, Fire Fist, Night Beam. You, you guys know the card. Now, I mean, he, he can obviously do the play that he's doing now, where he draws another bear, and he goes into um, King Tiger, but the way that I look at it is, yeah, that gives him a Tinky, and that gives him, um, what do you call that guy? That gives him Wolfberg, but I mean, he still can't attack with with the uh, King Tiger. Like, he has to kind of jump through hoops just to get around these deep presents. You see, he searches Gorilla, but it's like, he has to go through a lot of work just to fight against those deep presents. So, um, you see here, since he doesn't have any removal, I'm just going to set Quillen. Uh, and I'm going to pass turn. Um, if he attacks, obviously, I'm just going to use Deep Prison. He summons Car Car D, which I was kind of surprised. I thought that he would have just started trying to pick apart my back row. Um, I'm going to Valor that. I don't want him drawing more cards. He already has more advantage than I do. The only way I can get back in this game is to, well, an XC play would definitely help. But um, me giving him advantage is not going to, it's not going to cut the mustard here. So you see, um, I flip some into Quaylen, and at this point, even though he has a back row, I really don't care. I have the Lance. I actually really hope that he would have used Bottomless Day. Like, that would have been great because I would have been able to make Sasono. Oh, now, granted, he does have a Fat Veiler, which he'll have to burn here, but I would have been able to uh, make Sasono O and still pop his card um, in, what's it called? So you see, I'm, I'm activating my effect. Uh, he puts a card on his deck, which is a Fat Veiler, and then I'm just like, um... 
I what's it called? I banish my Quillen, and then I'm gonna set one. Um, I don't really feel like I need to attack. And then he plays full house, and I'm just like, you fucking main deck that. And it's like, are you serious? Like, sometimes the shit people play on DN. Now, if you look at my board, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna win against anything. Like Wolfberg against two D prisons, a Lance and a Sasano. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't come back from that unless, well, I mean, he could have nuked the field, but yeah, that that would have really been his only option is to nuke the field. At this point, I pretty much know he's gonna make um, silent honor arcs, and he's just gonna snatch still my Sasano and. Outside of me drawing um, Booj Incarnation, which I still do have two on my deck at this point, I'm pretty much in a tight bind. But if he didn't happen to have the fucking random ass four house, I would have been in a much better position. Although, again, I would have lost my field to um, to um, to uh, Exiton Knight, but I still could have, you know, top deck a Yamato and not be in a position to where, you know, I'm just in an awful position because now he's got a 2100 on board. I'm going to eat 2100. And, um, you know, I've lost all my defense, and even if I somehow uh, can draw some removal, I can't kill that monster. So, you see, I top deck, roll to Kree, and I just I just uh, scoop it up. I'm not the type of player where um, I know I'm going to lose, and I just, like, try to play it out because I don't really see any sense in that. Like, I don't like to try and extend the duel, troll people, or any of that shit. All right, so um, I'm immediately citing out my two Kaisers. They're really not that good in the Fire Fist matchup. Like, all they do is keep Wolfbrook off the field. But, I mean, Wolfbrook is, is it's like the only time that Fire Fist really summons two monsters. Like, Wolfbrook and Tensu. So, for the most part, Fire Fist kind of play like Bujins. They just keep one card on board. So, I cited in three Melcats, which is becoming one of my favorite cards right now. Because what I've realized is, in games two and three, people, it's like, you know, you play against Fire Fist or you know, uh, Geargia, and they just randomly just stack up, like, so much hate for Bujins, and a lot of times they set it all at once, and you can take basically one direct attack, and you can just use Malcat and just clear out the whole board and keep all your shit in your hand uh, when you're playing Bujins. So, you guys see, I've got Yamato, MST, and Double Royal Decree, so um, if he plays a Fire Formation, which I hope he does, um, I'm immediately going to MST, that's going to give me my one for one, and the thing about Fire Fist is, he doesn't have a lot of inherent destruction. That deck doesn't outside of bear. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump turtle instead of dumping um hair. You know what I mean? The problem with hair is sometimes like people can they can use bear, then they can play Tensu, then they can go into like black chip of corn, and then you know, what do you know? I lose my Yamato, but they can't do that play. Uh what's it called? They can't they well, yes they can, but you 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 get the point. Anyways, alright, so um, I rolled the cream during the end phase. Uh, at this point, I'm just going in. I'm just trying to go turbo in. I'm trying to go uh, turbo against him because, you know, outside of him nuking the field right now with um, with Wolfberg Exiton Knight play, I feel like I'm pretty much just going to coast to victory here. And he doesn't have a fire monster in graveyard, so it's going to be difficult to use Wolfberg to say the least. I would say that he's probably going to have to do a Tensu play to make Exiton Knight because right now... Um, if you notice, and you see he plays Full House, and I chain roll the Decree, which probably was a mistake. I should have waited for him to, I should have waited for him to MST my, I, I'm playing like way too aggressive. Like I was playing really, I don't know if I was excited to be playing somebody who's almost 1700 or what, but okay, so here's what I should have did, right? Um, I should have, uh, I should have let him play Full House, he would have chained MST, targeting my Decree, and then I would have chained another, um, I would have changed the second Royal Decree to his MST, and then that just would have been that. Because during the end phase, I can still get, I can, you know, I can put in for, what, 2,000, 30, 3,900, excuse me, 3,900, and then, uh, what's it called? He actually soft cheats here, because, <laughs> alright, here's the thing, right? I played Tinky, and he chained Full House, and he resolved his Full House when I played my Decree, so you now can't play, you, you can't, you can't replay an MST on the same Tinky because your official response was full house. So actually, I just caught it right now. He just soft cheated. That that is definitely a soft cheat. Anyways, uh, that's beyond the point. I don't get my um I don't get my my uh, Tinky, and I just don't pair in the graveyard. He plays double upstart. So thanks for the two thousand light points. And he sets a monster. Um, setting a monster against this deck, I'm just gonna attack it, especially if you're playing Fire Fist. If he happens to have Fire Fencing Ferret, I believe that that targets. I can use uh, Turtle in the damage step. So. It wouldn't kill me anyway. Um, at this point, my I've already got a hair and um, turtle in the graveyard, so I'm gonna dump Quillen in case 
I can imagine what I could use Quillen on. Oh yeah, if he if he like plays Defender or something like that, I could Quillen that. But right now with me having double roll the Kree, I don't really know what else I would use it on. Like any any other monster he puts on board, I'm just gonna crane it. So I really don't care. He summons Wolfbert. I assume he's going for Exiton play. I immediately Book of Moon it and he scoops it up. Um, at this point. Um, me going second in this match, I'm taking out the Valors, I'm siding in more defense, so you see I'm siding in my, uh, Rivalry of Warlords, and I simply say that because against Fire Fist, if you're playing Bujins, the, really, the only cards that, that affect Valor are good against are extra deck cards, things like Exiton Knight, it's good against Silent Honor Arc, um, and it's good against Wolfer. I mean, those three cards are really all you care about, like, you don't really care about anything else if you're playing against the, if you're playing against like you don't really care about, about bear and shit like that again uh you know turtle and what do you call it turtle and hair are what you use to to stop bear basically this is a really 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 good opening hand um uh, memory of an adversary lance duality mikazuki and yamato if i was going first i, I would have destroyed him because i would have dumped hair into the graveyard he would have summoned thunder king ryo he would have attacked in the memory of an adversary and then if for some reason uh even if he would have lanced, it would have died in battle anyway. So you see that he just sets five. Uh, this isn't that much of a problem. You're seeing here, I'm going to summon Mikazuki. Um, he has no response. So basically, I'm just going to set everything. Actually, now he, he uh, what's it called? Actually, he didn't never, he never said that he didn't have a response. He bottomless it. I play um, Forbidden Lance. Uh, if I had Crane here, I'd just fuck him up. <laughs> that would have been really nice. But you're seeing, I set Yamato. I set, or excuse me, I set Decree. I set Pot of Duality, and I set Memory of an Adversary. I'm going to set my Book of Moon. I'm thinking, here's, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking on his end phase, I'm going to roll to Creum, and then I'm going to Book of Moon it just because, you know, I don't want my, my shit dying to, like, a Forbidden Lance or whatever. Now, here's the thing, and, you know, you're going to see how, how stupidly aggressive I'm playing. <laughs> All right, so I Book of Moon the Ryo, and if he has a Lance and he uses it, that's just dumb. Um... And that that's well actually, yeah, he does use the lance. Alright, here's here's where I make a big mistake. I summon Yamato and I attack with Yamato and what's it called? I attack with Yamato and Mikazuki and he plays he plays Mirror Force, which just tells me obviously I have a mystical space typhoon and I'm gonna target your role to Kree. So I lose my entire board. Now, had I just attacked with Mikazuki like a smart person um, then Mikazuki would have died in main phase 2, I would have summoned Yamato, and I would have either craned the Thunder King, or actually more likely I just would have used, uh, I, I would have used Rivalry or Warlords, I just would have snatched all it, and I would have just kept it, so, anyways, uh, you're gonna see that I'm gonna try and make a fight, I'm gonna, going to try and fight back, Memory of an Adversary, uh, gets rid of Thunder King Ryo, which lets me immediately use my, uh, Pot of Duality, and you're seeing that Tanky, Malcat, and Hare, uh, Tinky looks like the best option there because Tinky gets me to Yamato. So we're going to play Tinky. And again, at the worst case scenario, I, not only does he not have any Fire Fist in Graveyard, I'm, I'm going to get his only monster anyway. So I just snatched Stone his only monster. What I could really use is like another Royal Decree. <laughs> so um, with me having nothing on board, I'm not going to attack in a three back row, but I am going to get Fiendish Chained for my trouble. So. Me not having a turtle in graveyard um, definitely hurts there. And the thing that sucks about Yamato, like his only, the only downside to Yamato is his fucking abysmal defense. Like if Yamato was like sixteen hundred defense right now, I would have no problem putting his ass in defense and ramming with Thunder King Ryo. And uh, but the problem is if I put him in defense and he mirror forces me or he de he deprisons me, then you know he could easily flip summon whatever the fuck that shitty monster is that he just set. And then, you know, he'd run over Yamato, and it would just be a fucking catastrophe. Uh, it would be a uh, catastrophe. So anyways, I top deck another uh, Bujani Crane, and I'm just like, mm, what should I do in this situation? You know what I mean? Like, he has, you know, six cards on board, or, wow, see, the video is, is so right. He has five cards on board. I have no idea why in the hell I thought he had six cards. And you see, I summon, I summon Exiton Knight, and I'm like, use effect. And he's like, uh, yeah, we, we have the same amount of cards. And I'm like, wait, what? And I'm like, one, two, three. I'm like, no, you have more cards. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I cannot. Capital G cannot count, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> because we both have five cards. 
Here's the thing. I can only use Exiton Knight during his phase. I cannot use it during my phase because during his phase, since I consolidated my two cards into one, he'll be plus one. What I need to do is essentially activate a neg one, but I don't run any neg ones in this deck that won't be on field. Like if I had something like Foolish Burial where I could dump, which honestly I wouldn't want to dump anything, but if I had something like Foolish Burial, which uh, is an inherent neg one, then I'd be able to use it, but Outside of that, no, I don't. So if he happens to ram, then I could torch the field. But outside of that, no. And you're seeing he's just loading up his back row. Again, this is why I side Malevolent Catastrophe. Because people do this against Bujins. They load up their entire fucking back row. And that's why you guys see me going to Exiton Knight so much. Because I'm basically saying, you know what? I don't care if you've got five cards set. If one of those cards can't stop Exiton Knight, you're going to lose your whole field. You know what I mean? And that's why I play Malcat. If one of your cards can't stop Malcat, you're going to lose your entire field. You see he plays the blind MST, but then his follow-up is what? And I thought immediately, I was like, all right, he's going to take you for bear. I'm going to lose my Exton Knight, and I'm going to just lose. And he plays the random MST, and then he just passes turn. Like, who the fuck does that? Like, I, I, that's frustrating. I really don't like when people, I feel like that's almost a troll play. Like, why even do the blind MST if you don't have a follow-up play? You know what I mean? Like, why not just save it? And you see, I'm actually counting his cards, and then I'm counting my cards. I am so bad at Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to set D-Prison in case he does rip the Tinky Bear. <laughs> I'm so, look at me, I'm still counting. I cannot count. <laughs> oh my god, what were they teaching me in grade school? Alright, so now, here's the thing. Now I'm starting to draw all these really good traps like D-Prison. And why am I still counting? Why am I still counting his cards? They're, they're not going to change. Anyways, I'm, I'm getting all these good traps like D-Prison and... um. What do you call this? I actually try and activate it again after counting his field like six times. And once again, I, I cannot use it during my turn because during my turn, I have the same amount of cards. And I'm like, man, I can't count. And I'm sure that every person in the whistle, every person in the chat was like, capital G can't count. <laughs> oh my God, this is one of the funniest tools ever. <laughs> I try to use Exiton Knight twice and I cannot use it. Anyways. All right, so I keep drawing these good traps. Like, I've got Memory of an Adversary. I've got Deep Prison. I'm like, all right, good shit, good shit. So now I'm like, I don't even know if I want to use Exiton Knight anymore because I'm, I'm drawing all these really good trap cards. I mean, you guys know me. I live and die by Royal Decree, but, you know, it never hurts to side in a bunch of traps too because, uh, quite frankly, people don't expect it against this deck or people don't expect it when you're playing this deck. And I'm still wondering what the hell's face down is, but I'm not going to attack into it. <laughs> Never that. So I drew Solemn Warning, and I'm like, man, these these traps are coming in handy now. I'm actually glad that I'm not drawing random Bujins like Crane and shit like that, because they wouldn't, or not Crane, but um, like Turtle and Hare and shit like that, because they wouldn't help me at all. So, you know, uh, we're both basically just logging up our fields. You see I've got Effect Veiler. Um... And outside of Honor Arc, there's nothing else I would really want to bail, right? Like, Honor Arc would pretty much be it. I mean, he can't Exiton Knight me. I believe we'd have the same amount of cards. I don't know because clearly we've, we've established that I can't count. So, uh, the second he goes for a, a, a play, an XC play, I immediately blast him with Solemn Warning. Um, I don't think any uh, Fire Fist players play... Uh, what do you call that guy? I don't think any Fire Fist players play... Um, seven tools of the bandit, and even if you did, you definitely wouldn't keep it in against this deck. I think I might have jumped the gun there. Um, you see, I drew the Royal Decree, but I just simply couldn't wait. I couldn't wait one turn, so I'm just like, ah, I'm gonna attack, attack. And then uh, he blasts me with the second Mirror Force, so. You see, he plays Card Card D, and I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> I am using Effect Veiler, so. Um, I definitely don't want him drawing any more cards, because, um, I can't beat him with advantage right now. Um, I don't really, I think my win condition right now is just more damage. Yeah, it's just, to, it's just to quickly do 8,000 and hopefully some of his cards like, some of his cards are just bad side cards. A lot of times I play more aggressive in game threes because, um, a lot of times people will overside. Now here's a, here's a misplay that I did amongst the like 50 misplays. I think what I should have did was I should have let him eat the 1600, right? I shouldn't have played Royal Decree. And then I should have played Bujin Karna uh, Bujin Karnani. I should have played Bujin Carnation in main phase two, and that would have gotten me my Quillen back. And now I have Royal Decree. The problem is I'm locked out of my own um I'm locked out of my D Prison and my memory of an adversary. 
And one of the even bigger problems is I don't have any Bujins removed. I'm looking at my graveyard and I'm like, fuck, I've got to get a Bujin removed like immediately. Otherwise, I can't use this damn um, Bujin Carnation. You know what I mean? So he plays Car Car D, which is cool because it gives him the plus one, but it gives me the fear release for my um, Sasano O. Unfortunately, I have to use a crane. It would have been nice if I could have top deck like a hair or something like that. But um, you're seeing that I think I'm going for... I wasn't sure if I was going to go for Yamato or what. Yeah, okay. I put hair into the graveyard, and even though I had Royal Decree, I still wanted to put myself in a position to where I could get something removed. Yeah, that was what I did. I wanted, me having two Booj Incarnations, I've got to get a fucking Booj removed. Period, point blank. Now, you could say, well, gee, you could have you, you could have popped, um, you could have used Quaylin on the Phoenix Chain. You know what I mean? I, I could have, I guess I could have done that play, but I just felt like having protection plus having, um, having protection, it, it was just a little better. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not sure if he's going to summon any one monster and leave it on board for me to quail in it. So I can't even count on my quail in, you know, uh, being live. And I don't have any other Beast Warrior monsters. <clears throat> so I felt like dumping the hair into the graveyard was the best play. Now, here's the great thing about the position that I'm in. Since you obviously know right now he's going into a rank 4 XC play, you know damn well that if he had Silent Honor arcs uh, available that he would go into that card. But he doesn't. Now, here's the thing. Every other um, XC, basically, that Fire Fist runs, that would kill um, my, what's it called, that would kill Sasano O, either, he either uses um, Destruction, like Inherent Destruction, something like Diamond Dire Wolf, or it targets. Now, he can target my guy, but there aren't any guys that just do a single target and blow up a monster. Uh, you know what I mean? And I'm really thinking about what he can do, and I'm like, uh, I don't think he can make access on that, because if I'm not mistaken, I still have one less card than he does. Because I just, once again, I went for an XC play and dumped the monster into Graveyard. Um, so I'm like, alright, he can make King Tiger. And he can search another Wolfberg. But I'm going to run that King Tiger over so fucking fast during my turn. Um, actually, I'll just use Quail and then I'll attack him directly. Because I want to, again, I want to get something banished. Um, and I'm, I'm really just trying to think, what is, it, what is it that he can make that's good? You know, I thought he can make Kagasuchi. The thing is, if he makes Kagasuchi right now... He, if he attacks, I'm going to use Crane on it. Then during my turn, I'm going to um, I'm going to use Crane Lamb and I'm going to pop it. And then I'm going to search another Crane. <laughs> so basically, I'm going to Crane him twice in the span of two turns. You see, he goes into Diamond Dire Wolf and he just pops the Decree. And I'm just guessing, all right, he wants to, he wants his traps live. So I'm like, uh, this kind of this is a little unfortunate because you know. I assume that I'm probably going to be using my hair sometime soon. You see he sets another card in his back row. So I'm going to detach Crane. And with me drawing the turtle, I'm probably going to go for a Beast Warrior here. I'm probably going to go for Mika. So obviously, um, I don't get my effect. And again, the misplays just keep coming. Instead of summoning turtle and attacking, what I should have done was I should have used Quailin. I should have popped the Phoenix Chain. And then I should have just attacked. That way, I don't have to burn any more cards. Like, I don't have to invest any more cards on board. And to be completely honest, I was a little afraid of him having full house right now. Because he can easily pop the two Phoenix Chains and then target my back rows with, I guess, like one of his back rows. Because I think it's two face up and three face down. So, anyways, you're seeing that he plays Soul Drain. And he should pay a thousand life points, which he does. I'm immediately going to chain. Um, I'm immediately going to chain uh, my hair. Now, I'm guessing if I would have played Quaylin on Phoenix Chain, he would have chained Soul Drain, which would have prompted me to chain my hair. So, I guess the end result, for the most part, is the same. You know what I mean? Uh, you're seeing that now, I'm going to summon the hair. Or, excuse me, I'm going to summon the turtle. He uses Solemn Warning on it. I'm, I'm still pretty good, because I've got a 2,500 beater on board. And it's not like his deck can pump out 2,500 beaters. I mean, he can go into... Wolfberg, but that's pretty much the only way for him to just instantly get over it. You're seeing that he plays Bear. He's going for the Tensu Pop, and I'm like, fine. And I'm like, thank God. Like, finally he can attack into this fucking memory of adversary that I've been holding for like the last four turns. He attacks. I activate memory of adversary. Um, I'm going to take 1600. He does have the Lance for it. And I'm like, all right, hold on. What do I want to do here? And I'm thinking. And I'm like, all right, well... If I eat the 800 attack, I can go into, I can go into, uh, I can instantly use my Bujin Carnation, and I can run over Bear, and if I get a Crane, I could just, I mean, I could game him right there, 
But, you know, then I decided I don't really want him searching for Tenki, Tenki because I feel like he's struggling for monsters. So I decided to go ahead and uh, gain the 1600. Um, I What's it called? Uh, I chained the D present to the Lance. It dies. And the reason, again, that I did that is I felt like he didn't have monsters. And more importantly, I felt like um, he had an open field. I mean, this card, whatever his face down is, he hasn't used it all game. So it can't be that good. It must be some, I don't know, random shit that's not good right now. So I felt like even if I didn't draw a monster, I could just swing with Crane. So anyways, he has the second Phoenix Chain. Uh, I think I have Turtle in the Graveyard. I can't use it because of Soul Drain. He plays Tanky Full with Burke. So now he's going in for a rank 4 XC play. And uh, he plays, what's it called? He activates Bear's Effect. And he, he pays the cost of um, popping or sending Fire Formation Tanky to the Graveyard. This is what made me think that he was going to go into uh, to King Tiger because... If he wasn't going to go into King Tiger, what was the point of doing that play? You know what I mean? Like, what was the point of, of using the bear effect? I was assuming that he was using the bear effect because he wanted to um, search another copy of Tinky and, I guess, get, like, the third Wolfberg. I mean, I know some versions run two Wolfbergs, especially the um, especially the, the plus one Fire Fist, which I'm playing against. So I assumed he was going to go for that. So for him to use the bear effect, it's like, why... You know what I mean? Um, unless he thought maybe he was going to top deck another trap or something like that. And he didn't want to be locked out of his back. I mean, his Phoenix chains aren't really good. So anyways, he makes Kagasuchi. I'm good because I've got um, I've got Crane in hand. So I'm like, all right, he's obviously not running any Bujins. So he's going to stay at 25. And I'm going to go to 38. And I'm going to win the game right here. Except um, Capital G can't do math. So uh, we've established I can't count. And I can't do math. <clears throat> Alright, so during the damage calculation, I'm going to activate Crane, and that is just going to be that, and that was actually a clear mistake, because <laughs> had I known that it wasn't actually going to kill him, what I would have done was, I would have used, I would have just let uh, Mikazuki die, I would have used Booj Incarnation, then I would have um, just exceeded into a Sasano O, I would have, uh, what's it called? I would have searched out another crane if he would have used bottomless or warning. Well, he can't warn him, but if he would have done anything to kill my first Susano O, then obviously I just would have used my second Booj Incarnation. You see, I'm sitting on two Booj Incarnations, and I plan on using the fuck out of them. <clears throat> so, well, I guess technically I can only use one. No, you know what? Actually, yeah, I can use, what's it called? I can use uh, multiples here. You see, he plays, I'm going for game, obviously. Against one back row, if I get the crane, I just win. All right, so he changed mistake, which I I don't like when Fire Fist players do that because I mean I guess it gets you the one stop that you need, but Fire Fist with Tinkies and shit that that kind of searches a little bit too. I mean I guess Tinky is the only search that they play, but I mean I, I don't know I just feel a little indifferent about it. All right, so I would say that um, I probably should have went for Diamond Dire Wolf um, during that last turn. I should have popped Soul Drain and then I should have went for Susono O. Because Soul Drain is a little bit of a a little bit of a problem. You see that he was it called? You see that he um he ate the uh he ate the attack from Sasono O, and I'm just like, all right, whatever. I top deck honest. I'm just gonna go in to try and attack for game. <laughs> you see, I've just I've played so aggressive this game. I have been relentless, and I know it looks probably so bad, but I've never played this aggressive. And now partially it has to do with his entire field is just locked down. So sometimes it is clearly lucky to draw double Booj Incarnation than it is to, I don't know, learn how to count or do math or any of that shit that they try to teach you in school, um, as I clearly don't know how to do. Thank you guys for watching, as always.